My name is Alice. I'm Amira Hall's co-host and uh, longtime student and friend. So uh, welcome everybody. Hello, Amira. It's so wonderful to see your face and have you um, out here sharing your beautiful energy with all of us. And I uh, go way back with you, don't I? I think we... uh, it goes back. We were trying to count on our fingers how many years it's been, <laughs> huh? A, a lot of fingers. A lot yeah. of fingers. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fingers. Um, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, do you want to share your web page so the audience can see the Zoom numbers to be calling in on your future live shows and uh, amirahall.com a m i r a h is there another h a w double l amirahall.com there's two h's and two l's it's kind of how i say it yes uh so that has all the zoom info you can join amira's email list and get notified uh weekly um and call in and ask your, your questions from the Zoom chat room. So, Amira. Okay, well, uh, you know, I, I obviously the energy is a little bit scattered here. There we go. It's my setup. Oh, never mind. It's just my energy. It's so <laughs> strong and just, just you know, it, there's a lot of different things, wheels to turn and spin here when we're we're working live, but I just want to invite the um, anybody who's got questions to come in. I'm just going to take a minute to just ground this space, this sacred space, and just move out some of this technology energy for anybody struggling with either my link and the numbers or the time and, and pulling everything together so that we can come here into the sacred space to get some answers. I just want to ground it and invite um, my guides and teachers and your guides and teachers to come in um, to bring in the messages or information that we need to have today. So let's just create a giant grounding cord and bring ourselves into the present moment, into the sacredness of our heart, the divine connection. And I know we were jumping around a little bit, Alice. I was distracted because I can't help it. I can't bring it up on my screen, but here's oh. the picture that jumped out at me today that I had. And this, this is where Alice and I were in, you got the ring here, light. Yeah. And um, there we are at the pause of the Sphinx. And we were reflecting on this powerful energy today, being that on uh, Sunday, we've got the Lion's Gate, a very powerful energy, um, a really inviting us to open in our hearts, connecting our hearts to the divine or being a, a clear channel. Um, so it's a powerful gateway and a time period for us to step into who we are to be able to manifest in, in, in conjunction to with our life purpose. Having said that, we were talking about Egypt earlier today as we were preparing and there's just so many magical moments in Egypt, so many lessons, so many things that, you know, there's always a fascination with Egypt, right? So we thought we'd share a little bit. And Alice, you were reminding me of some experiences that you had um, that I, I had completely forgotten. Of course, my experiences were important to me at the time, and it's hard to take in everybody's amazing, amazingness. So would you mind sharing what was what stood out to you um, that brought us here to this conversation today? Yeah, and if I could back up even for a moment, we started because I had a terrible breakup and I was on the couch, couldn't go to work, crying my eyes out that it didn't work out. And a friend of mine said, you gotta call Amira Hall and have her move that energy out of you, girl. And I'm like, what are you talking about moving energy? And she's like, yeah, it's just energy and you can move it. And I'm like, I'm all in, give me her phone number. And I mean, I would say, I'm the type of person that if I hear something like that, within the hour I was on the phone scheduling with you. And I went from literally not being able to go to my job, calling in sick to going RJ who? <laughs> which was his name. 
And I ended up even visiting him and being friends. And I was so in my power and so okay with, with where things were at. And I was like, wow, this is so amazing to me that this is the magic of shifting energy within my being. And so from there, I asked you, you know, if you could have any classes to teach this, I am all in. And I, my hair is standing on end right now because it, it just was such a pivotal time in my life. So we had classes that started within a month or so, I would say. And with that group of people, I learned so much about um, moving energy for myself and with you and healing. And that is the group that you said, you know, we're going to be going to Egypt. And um, I think you had mentioned to me personally, you're like, Alice, this, this could be really life shifting for you. And boy, was it life shifting for me. So yeah, one of our experiences that we were talking about today was being in the King's Chamber. And um, do you remember the ceremony that we did with the blue lotus oil? Uh, you know, you remember a whole lot more than me, Alice, of that particular trip, because I've been there 12 times now. So, <laughs> so it's, you know, they kind of all merge together and they're like, they're all incredibly profound. It's hard to sort of hold all of that in my, in my database, you know, but please share. Um, I've got some stories from the great uh, King's Chamber myself. I, I think it's all relevant to today and what we're going through because I was sharing with Alice over the last few weeks that I'm noticing profound shifts in, in the people around me with clients, with friends, and people are noticing and experiencing mystical slash weird things. And some people have actually thought they were losing their minds. So I think this is all relevant. So I really invite you to, to share that story. Well, I would love to. And it, it's very, it's always remained very fresh in my mind. So we were invited to stand in a circle around the sarcophagus in the king's chamber. Just getting into the King's Chamber, I could not have done without you because I'm extremely claustrophobic and you have to kneel down and I'm pretty tall and go, it's just very, very difficult. So I was like literally hyperventilating just getting into it, but I knew I had to be there. So we did ceremony where we stood around the sarcophagus and we were invited to Om you know, um, that was literally the second time in my life I had ever even heard of oming. And as we were in that space, which is the acoustics in there are amazing. Um, I, I know there are some recordings available uh, to understand the dynamic of the acoustics. Well, I, I, we, I can interject. It's yeah. apparently the most um, crisp or clear, the highest acoustics of any building on the planet. I don't think any, any building has been able to match the acoustics in that chamber. Yeah. And I, I mean, I have like goosebumps now all the way down my legs, just, it, it is so powerful, um, and, and amazing to be in that space. So as we owned, um, I started going very, very deep into, I don't know, I guess it would be a trance, but it was my own voice and our voices were reverberating. And I feel that what happened is my voice held the tones that were to open back to me my life purpose. So I started going into a past life, which I was on, I think it was Iceland or Greenland. I was a blonde haired tall man and I was in a village and I was part of a, uh, a, a, a sound ritual where people were um, calling out uh, a tone. I don't know if it was necessarily oming and I was told very clearly that my role was to provide the missing key. So the healing was 
complete. So it was a call and response similar to what we were doing in the King's Chamber. But I will tell you, it was so powerful, I normally don't even have vision. And I only really had vision in Egypt, where my third eye could see just like I was looking at a television. I felt my body start to become particles, and I felt like I was disintegrating. And I started to feel like I was going to, like, bilocate to that lifetime and I, and I, at some point I said, if I stay in this, I'm literally going to disappear. I felt from this dimension. <laughs> that's, that's how powerful it was. And so I made a decision that I wasn't quite ready for that. <laughs> and, and I can't tell you how poignant that was for me. It was so validating. So I don't know if well, you want to. Thank you for that, Alice. Well, you know, it's interesting because we we're talking about awareness and I went, took my daily walk on the beach today and I, I was just walking along, you know, no headset, no music, no anything, just a paying attention to what's around me, but being grounded, being present. And it was interesting, some guys were throwing a Frisbee and I stopped because they were gonna, I wasn't sure if he was gonna pitch his Frisbee or if he was gonna wait till I go or what. So I just paused just to wait. And they, one guy went around and they decided to wait till all the ladies passed. And one guy beelined right over to me and he goes, wow. He goes, you're really in tune. And I, I looked at him and go, what do you mean? He goes, you're really aware of your environment. And, and I'm like, okay. And he goes, most people just walk around with their head down, looking at the sand or their feet. And I, that reminded me, okay, so being present, being aware, isn't only when we're in meditation, but mm -hmm. the awareness translates to everything we do. And when people call and ask me, when am I going to get the job? When's the relationship going to come? How do I resolve this issue? The challenge comes back to being present. So there's a sense of being anchored. And when our energy field is lighter, it's not confused with a fusion of foreign energy, then we become a clear vessel. Not only do we attract what we need and desire to us, but others see us different. People will perceive our presence that, you know, they never noticed us before. And I've heard that from many, many, many clients over and over. So, in, you know, and also by having that awareness, an energetic vibration, of being in the present, well, when we go into meditation, this is the key to developing your clairvoyance for anybody that's thinking, like, I just want to develop my psychic abilities. The best psychics, the best healers are able to focus and have a presence. They're, mm -hmm. you know, I find that a lot of healers that I've, I've, I've met or seen or psychics, if they're struggling financially or struggling with you know, even um, building their business, it's the, uh, the biggest challenge is being present. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But you're really present right now. That's great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because I've had my challenges with various jobs. And um, at one point, I heard somebody say, you know, um, you're in resistance if you're afraid that you're not going to get another job. You're resisting it. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not resisting it. I need a freaking job. Yeah. And, um, you know, the more I thought about it, though, I'm like, this is everything Amira ever talked about. If you're allowing the fear energy and you're not using some type of a tool to ground it out, release it or process it or understand it and you know, transform it, then you are kind of self-sabotaging, aren't you? And I don't think that's always easy to admit. No, nor are we aware of we're doing it. And of course, and our best intentions aren't to do that. But, you know, there's so many different levels of us that it becomes a really convoluted, you know, discovery process. It doesn't have to be that way. And it feels like we're losing a part of ourselves if we we are surrendering to this place of being present and yeah. we move out the distortions or the energetics 
that we're not aware of that are confusing our ability to draw to us what we want. It, yeah. it, that's the sabotage you're mentioning. Yeah. Yeah. So I should say that the way that my life changed after that moment in the King's Chamber is I was one of those people that came back to the States and quit my job. Oh, and wow. I was told I was going to, I became a sound healer and I didn't even know what it meant. But I, I was so strongly present and in connection with my guides, they said, you'll know what to do when they get here. And I started acquiring crystal singing bowls, Himalayan bowls and uh, drums and everything that made a sound. And I was so connected. I said, I'm going to trust. And I kind of got off on this that I'm going to let people come. I'm not going to really ask them what their issue is until they are present with me and we connect. And I, I trust that I will be guided. And I had a, an extraordinary seven years of meeting people from all over and having all different kinds of issues and using everything that I learned and, and those tools. So it really is everything, you know? It yeah, really and, and the tools that we practice and use are, you know, rather scientific um, in terms of tools, um, but having something to go back onto or fall back, like the ABCs of an alphabet, like if you don't know how to spell a word, you pronounce it out, but knowing the letters really helps to create a word and so having these tools bring us back to a place to steer or or direct the energies to create a particular outcome mm -hmm. it's like a painter having a brush he can have a brush and he can have paints but if he doesn't have the water he can't make the flow exactly so yeah. i'm really feeling um I want to share the story about the masters of the light of an experience that I had in this sarcophagus also, but I feel like, and I, this may be related to Mario and maybe a question he has, I don't know. I'm feeling a big, you know, um, a sense of wanting to connect. So, um, I, I too was had an experience of laying in the king's chamber in the in the sarcophagus, and we did the ceremony as Alice explained, and we we had the group chanting Om, which is so incredible because the Oms aren't just one Om. Everybody starts and stops. Like I'll say Om, and Alice has already finished, and so there's becomes a melody of Oms, like the sound of the universe. That's the best way I describe it. Oh, yeah, absolutely amazing. And um, so what what happened for me? It was a vision of the ascended masters coming it was almost like it was a birthday it was an incredible moment in time my soul's birthday and they were coming down this as uh, descending a staircase that was illumined and so they progression up like a procession of them stepped down and and they kept getting closer and closer and closer and as they got down to level ground the line split of all these masters and then they looked the same to me, but then I heard them say, we're the masters of the light and we're the masters of the dark. Who do you follow? Wow. And in that moment, it was like a slap snap decision. I said, the light, of course, but it was kind of like a what? What is this? Holy cow, there really are masters of the darkness. Mm -hmm. and, and they were tricking me in a way because I don't think they ultimately tricked me, but they looked the same. If you didn't know the vibration and if they didn't identify them, I'm not so sure I would have. And this has been coming a up a lot, not only for me when I'm, I'm, I'm being exposed to, to some healers that I, you know, you see there's an incredible amount of healers and psychics and, and um, you know, intuitives that are popping up everywhere. So the issue comes up, like, how do you know who to 
to follow, who to go to, who to trust. And it becomes alarming to me um, what some of the messages are and how people are being misled and misguided and ripped off, pardon, you know, the simplicity. And so I just wanted to address that because there's a lot of confusion and it comes down to a place of discernment. And I think being able to trust someone based on their levels of experience, perhaps even testimonies or other people's stories and experiences. Um, um, and I guess when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. And, it, and it's a time, I think, um, that people are gonna to have to make a decision. And I've been hearing this a lot to different people that are spiritual. And um, and, and I, I agree that um, I think it's fast coming to a time where you have to make a decision. Do you follow the light or the dark? I think the veils are being lifted, don't you? Absolutely. More clients are telling me they're having experiences of their deceased loved ones who have made their transition. Um, people are sensing a guide or wanting to get closer to their guides. Um, but there again, I think th that's true. But there's also so many people calling themselves a healer or teacher and might not have the levels of expertise that it requires to deal with some of these dark energies. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, that becomes a concern for me. I've seen a lot of clients truly get damaged um, and sets them back. So the masters of the dark exist and there's a lot of people that don't even know they're dealing with them. Right. Or they're, they're doing some healing work. Like you've, you've had Reiki experience. I am a Reiki master. I stopped practicing it because I started to see people out in the world, other healers, they're saying, oh, I'm a Reiki master. Well, who are you channeling? Exactly. What energy are you working with? Do you know? Oh, no, it's just the divine light. Really? And, you know, from my own personal experience, just seeing the masters of the dark and having these many, many experiences like this and the tricksters and working with clients and seeing how they mask themselves and, and hide and seek and play games. Yeah, there's a lot more than it's just not cut and dry, you know. It's it's not cut and dry, and um, yeah, that's always been something that I've been acutely aware of. Is you have to know your intention, and you, there's no shortcuts really. Um, I don't think there's any shortcuts, and I have a feeling that. If you think there is a shortcut, there's, it's really probably quote unquote called a lesson. That's not going to be fun, <laughs> but, um, you know, in terms of giving away your power to get something back is more what I mean. We were talking about, do people sell their soul to the devil? And you know what? I, I think they sometimes do and get into magic or some things that are very different than what I've learned with you. Um, well, and I think there are various forms we can say the light and not dark magic, but um, you know, the, the, the duality, the two sides of mm -hmm. creation, mm -hmm. it's magic, right? Some people call it magic, but in essence, it's, it's healing, it's creativity, it's, we're creating something. So mm -hmm. are we gonna work from a destructive slash controlling manipulative energy or are we going to work with a fluid trust and allowing and a, you know a higher vibration right right that's a great delineation that... yeah because having lived in the middle east and working with clients from africa the middle eastern uh idea and even asian uh cultures they much more are in tune with the let's you know for lack of a better word the darker side of things or manipulative and spells and you know it's very real and i know we're going down another rabbit hole so why don't we bring in mario <laughs> are you okay with that sure you I'm got the, ask him that. to unmute here hey mario can you unmute mario 
Maybe he's multitasking. There he does. That work? Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good. It's funny because you just mentioned the Middle East. Oh, and yeah. Not to listen to you and not for any other reason. I think, is she Latin? Is she Italian? Is she Middle Eastern? Is she a little bit of everything? Because you have, <laughs> you have that ambiguous ethnic look and yet you look so American. Well, it's my French Canadian Polish look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mother's French um, and I'm 12 generations French Canadian. Oh, you are. Okay, so that's what that is. Because as soon as you came on, I thought she's looking like young Meryl Streep for some oh, reason. Oh, funny. <laughs> oh. Sure it before, but anyway. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. She's yeah. a she's a blockbuster, isn't she? Oh, she yeah. is, but she's also supposed to be a great person, from what I understand. Yeah, she's got some sweet energy. Yeah, she yeah. Does. And you're kind of in the midst of all of Hollywood action, aren't you? Do you work a lot with um, stars? You know, I, I don't work a lot with stars. I have, you know, here and there. I was uh -huh. never. I was never. I always had a resistance to going, to. Uh, um, famous. I always did. I always had a reluctance and I re could remember myself praying to do a great job on a certain casting, but not to get Melrose Place or whatever it was because I was afraid of. Okay, so what role were you? Were you an actor or are you an actor? Yeah, I, I am. I, oh, still, okay. I still work um, in the business in and out. Okay. It's one of the many things that I do. Okay. But, um, so you're in the entertainment business and you do do tricks. <laughs> I'm sorry, my guides are really getting silly today. Okay. No, I don't. I don't do any tricks. I uh, <laughs> uh, I, just, I just act from okay. time to time, and okay. uh, you know I've been able to uh, to do work throughout probably two and a half decades or so. But again, I was always reluctant, or even to get my kids into. The business because there is a very very dark uh energy mm -hmm. not only energy it's almost as though i mean you talk about selling your soul i i believe it's a real thing only instinctually from meeting people that are successful let's say but they're unfeeling completely and they know they know false humility or, or, or empathy or, but your, your gut knows that this is almost an empty person. Shell? Like a shell? Like, like a shell, uh, yeah. And, and because if you really think about Hollywood, it's, it's based on facades. So when you see these beautiful buildings, like let's say in Gone with the Wind or something like this, when you walk behind them, there's nothing there, mm -hmm. nothing. You know, it's just propped, you know, to look a certain way. And I think that's symbolic of a lot of what Hollywood is based on. And of course, there's the magic element, because if you think about, you know, 100 years ago, there were people that would say, I won't watch one of those moving pictures because it's the devil's work. <laughs> you know, we think nothing of it. Well, there's something about the word Hollywood. I remember writing about it. Yeah. And I, I'm, it's not coming to me right now, but there's an actual connotation to magic. That doesn't surprise me, but, and, and also don't forget, I mean, regardless of your socioeconomic level or where you're from or what you know or don't know, it's probably one of the most, if not the most famous word that mm -hmm. transcends any culture, any, socioeconomic level, anything, people, everyone knows what Hollywood is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to symbolize. So it's interesting that, uh, uh, well, I mean, Hollywood also has the magic castle. I'm just going back to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's, it's got a lot of, it has a lot of weirdness to it. And, and, the city of Hollywood itself is kind of destitute or kind of forgotten and um, sad. It's not a beautiful place. And it's funny, I, I knew this Italian woman who said when people want to go to Hollywood to see what they think is like glamorous or beautiful people, she takes them to Vegas. 
because, <laughs> because Hollywood is dumb. Isn't that interesting? It's very interesting. Well, y- you know, it's interesting because as you're saying that, Spirit yeah. is showing me it's a place of magic. Yeah. And we were talking about magic. We were talking about in the King's Chamber and going into alternate dimensions. And Hollywood basically does that to us. Yeah. It takes yeah. us out of our numbness or our dumbass job or our day or our bad relationships. And we get into a fantasy. We step into another alternate reality. Yeah, it's true. And Alice and I were talking about being present. And we can't be, the true magic happens in our ability to manifest whatever we want, what anything, anything and everything requires us to be present. The more present in the now, the body and the spirit aligned, that's where the magic happens that literally creates a force field of electricity magnetic that draws that thing to us. The more aligned we are, And Alice, I want to just give you a shout out. She just got a new job today. So, but in the last few weeks, I've observed you becoming more and more integrated and not second, like, even though we second guess ourselves, it's like align with what you want and be okay with it and accept it. And the more you came into that awareness, the more it went boom and manifested. Fast fast real fast yes like within 24 hours fast (laughs) yeah and so that's if with anything that we desire and mario you haven't really expressed what it is or your question but i i really think this is so key wherever we're stuck wherever we're frustrated wherever we are refusing as you said you refused your success is that yeah. fear? Is that yeah. self-doubt? Is yeah. that somebody else's belief system that imposed on you what I you would was, or wouldn't be as an actor or as a Hollywood? I, I thought it was, uh, it didn't make sense to me. Um, and it kind of tormented me as, as a younger person because it was an instinct that, you know, I, I could change in a very negative way. And if I made mention about that, people would say, oh, you're crazy. You know, that would never happen. You're who you are, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. But it made sense to me when I had children and I thought, there's no way that I would want my kids in this business and have to go into hiding for fear of being famous or successful. Well, guess what? I've been a psychic for 22 years and more or less I was in hiding. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, the point, I think we can hide our light and our gifts, no matter where yeah. we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mario, so- did you ever do any miming? No. No, miming is kind of funny to me. I don't know. Because you're showing me this, you're showing me, I don't think you're black, but you're showing me a black face and you're showing me miming and you look like it's it looks like in the 1920s oh wow like al jolson or something like that yes oh. and the energy that i'm picking up here is a lifetime where you were laughed at ridiculed humiliated and just that and in it and i'm also seeing a lifetime as a court jester where there was more humiliation in that role. It's almost like it wasn't a privilege. It was more of a- um, uh, Torture, another torture. Yeah, yeah, that, those two things are lighting up really strong. Hmm. And you know what's interesting, Amira, is-, is I just got I to shut the window. Mario, I'm so fascinated by your story because all the rabbit holes I've gone down this past year and a half have been very revealing about the level of, um, you know, dark magic and um, spell work that happens in Hollywood. So there's been a lot of people coming out and exposing this and talking about this. And so I'm just really fascinated 
by you, um, I don't know, being here and talking about this. And then as a mirror picked up on that energy, I feel like it's not only a past life, it's really presently what's been alerting you to be careful because I think it's true, don't you, Amir? A lot of these people that have become famous have had to sell their soul a little bit and maybe engage in some practices that are certainly not of the light. No, no. And the fact that you brought up your kids right, is a red flag to me of spirit wanting to, um, let's just see what message comes through on that. Um, I think there's sort of, you have an innate sense. I don't know if you've been exposed to, I almost don't even want to say it, but um, child, child abuse circles and whether you knew about them, but I feel like there's a fear of losing your children to abuse. And, and whether it's in your immediate environment or an influence from the outside environment, I just see this sort of running through, like, you know, when a car whizzes by, if you're in a window and you can sort of just see the movement, you, you, you don't see it, but you feel, you know, sense it going. That's kind of how I see it it's so close to you, this energy of child ab abuse. Is that a concern that you're having of your kids? It was when, when they were younger, it would be something that, because I thought one of, one of my sons was, um, uh, actually, uh, he has a different father, but I raised him and mm -hmm. he was going into music and he was very prolific, very talented, naturally gifted lyricist and uh, a great kid, smart and extremely gifted. And I just, did not believe that it was good for him at like 15 to go into the business. And then you, you would hear all of this like, well, you got to get them when they're young and at, at a certain age. And, and I thought, no, he's not going to be any less interesting, any less intelligent, any less prolific, any less beautiful at 18. But it, you know, gives the kid that much more time to realize you know, what's around him outside of the mm -hmm. good there's lots of drugs and everything else. And mm -hmm. ironically enough, he did pretty well and mm -hmm. still does. And I remember one time he said to me, you know, all that crazy stuff that you would talk about, you know, with selling yourself or a deal with the devil and this kind of thing. And I said, yeah, he said, I just came back from a meeting that scared the shit out of me. That was exactly that. And it was basically something along the lines of you're more talented than we need you to be. But within like X amount of time, three to six months, your household name, it's that simple. And um, all you have to do is all you have to do. And it scared the shit out of him because he, he couldn't believe that it was that out in plain sight. What were they going to do? They were going to just make him super famous. But what and did he have to do? For what? He yeah. had to just would sign off basically any kind of, I think, spiritual um, freedom. You know, because if you think about it, the, the idea of fame is a premium now, regardless of how you get it. And what it is really is a prison of sorts because mm -hmm. If you don't have the, the luxury of taking a walk, of being free, of just being who you are, as opposed to constantly being uh, documented, like a Kardashian, let's say, you know, that's a that's a big contract. It's when big. I when I think of it, it's a big contract um, to uh, fulfill, and nothing could equal freedom. The freedom to be able to help someone uh, uh, 
because you're not worried about it being a liability or how it's going to look on camera or how the media is going to alter that. I mean, that has to be one of the worst uh, um, existences, I think. Well, there is something to be said about that because I think more and more people are waking up too and they, they want to find their purpose. But I think associated with purpose is freedom. The freedom to completely express yourself, to, to free your soul from its captivity of programming, belief systems, other people's fears, our own fears, right? And so there's that innate sense of, I, I have something to do, I have something to be. I, and yet then we battle those fears or those, you know, well, what if I lose myself? Yeah. You know, I know that a lot of people, I have a good friend that did this. She, she got married, she lost a sense of herself. She sort of, yes, there's a compromise in joining in a partnership, but she completely sort of stopped the things she liked doing to do the things that the partnership did together. Mm -hmm. And eventually that caught up to her, right? Stopped going to church, stopped doing her art, stopped, you know, doing things that were feeding her soul. And then pe people wake up and go, well, shit, my marriage fell apart or I, you know, hate my job or I'm so sick, I can't do anything. And it's because we're not listening to that little inner voice. Like, what do I need to do? And Mario, you <laughs> you have something to do to stand out and shine, to claim that point on the stage. And it doesn't have to be as an actor, but in your life, it's just a metaphor. No, I, I believe that to be true. I, I do. I, uh, and it's... Uh... I believe I, I just for whatever reason I believe there is a, a larger purpose. Have you been straddling two different types of work or? I, two always, I always do a lot of different kinds of work. Um, I, I have for years just two main because, things. Is there two things I see you teeter tottering? Um, in terms of making money, uh, I did a lot of uh, like I have um, a cafe, and so I. I'm a, a coffee roaster. I've had, you know, uh, a pizzeria in the past. Um, uh, I've done tile work and marble work and lots of it, you know, home improvement kind of stuff. I was a photographer for years. Um, so a lot, a lot of different things. Um, talented. You're very talented. You know, so that that's also a problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you can do so much. Yes, because you know the two things that stood out to me as a child, and I was kind of like an immigrant. Uh, I was raised by immigrants from the old country, and so to know that you're supposed to act. When I didn't even you know go to a movie till I was about eleven, and I didn't even understand the concept or anyone around me of what that meant. Really, so did your parents sort of channel you into that or no not at all um not at all they were from the old country my mother passed on when I was young and I was raised by grandparents but it was something that I knew that was an impossibility given the circumstances of where I was and how I was growing up mm -hmm. and yet I still was able to make it out here mm -hmm. on instinct not on oh this is how you do it or this is what you might want to try or take an acting class. I didn't When's even know. When's your birthday, Mario? It's May 22nd, 1966. Okay, so you're you're um, a Gemini. Maybe that's why I'm seeing you go from one foot to the next. You're, you're, you, you, not only can you spin a lot of plates, but pizza plates. <laughs> no. Um, uh, <laughs> I can spin the pizza. I really can. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, I'm, I'm just seeing this left foot and then right foot and then left foot and then right foot, almost like you're, you're, the pavement is hot and you just keep lifting, you know, like, yeah. so I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say there. And by the way, I'm yawning. I do that when I'm moving energy and spirit wants to come through. So it's starting to come. 
Oh, and usually I'm just on a phone, so I'm not, everybody doesn't get to see into my, you know, t tonsils, uh, how deeply I'm yawning. So hopefully I'll remember to cover my mouth being on video. Um, Mario, do you have a question for me tonight? Uh, you know, I didn't think, I thought I was just going to listen tonight, but. You were just going to talk and entertain us and. No, no. That I, you are. I, I was just going to listen, but now that, that, you know, you mentioned the two things. I think I'm segueing into another one of my uh, uh, trade, not my traits, but my um, gifts and it's writing. I believe that I'm gonna okay. get more into writing for whatever reason, only because it feels like it beckons me. Well, you're, um, <laughs> funny thing, on point. <laughs> <laughs> I got a pen here. I, that's what spirit's saying. It's on point. And they're also telling me that you're a powerful channel. And the way that you've been able to be exceptional at so many different things is you're channeling. And you get out of your way, your own way enough so that you can just bring in this creativity. And being able to discipline yourself to truly understand that you're channeling and bring it through is a gift also but to recognize it at a higher level is are you fascinated with mysteries uh, no i'm not fa fascinated with mysteries as much as um you mentioned channeling and when okay. really great uh, um pieces have come out of me they've been effortless and what i mean by that is uh -huh. it's like i sit and characters show up and they speak and I document it's kind of like a court stenographer that's channeling you know it's so it's such a beautiful gift because it's not something that I believe I can take responsibility for by doing as much as it is me listening to what needs to be documented that's right and it's also being attentive in the moment yes. so you're so utterly laser sharp focused on the message you're stepping aside your ego and you're this clear vessel it's like you just plug in the ear set you know the headset and you're going okay i'm ready yeah. and then it starts you know when i channel in the morning sometimes i'll sit down with my book and I'll say, okay, I'm here, I'm ready. And they'll go, well, we're here. We're already here. It's just a matter of me not listening. Right. <laughs> That's so funny. In fact, do you mind if I read one? Not at all, please. It's in line with what we're talking about. So I just start scribbling light ones. That's what they said. They're the light ones. And they said, yes, we're here. We don't not, we do not compete with the noise in your world. In other words, they're saying, sit and get quiet, then we're, we're right on, right? I said, okay, the interference of, of noise in your world blocks our communication with your species. This environment is toxic to your growth and your connection to inner worlds. We don't wear boxing gloves to punch our way into your awareness. Rather, we hold our presence still and when you slow down your movement raise your vibration then we can easily connect mm -hmm. and then i said well who are you and they said we're your friends the arcturians your brothers your family the seed lifting me up and then that's when they showed me on being on a plate on a platter and they started lifting me up and raising me like a coffee um, on a coffee saucer um, i saw this platform raising and these etheric doors open they were massive big doors open and i stepped through and it was like there was a vibrational flush right through me and it neutralized it was like a sanitizing spray that completely sprayed and neutralized my energy field and then there was this intense baking light almost like when they they use a light to um, set the glue for your crown. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but the dentist has this light beam. And so it, it's like this laser light just froze the energy. And um, they said that the earth vibration is being um, 
the earth vibration below is light years of separation. And I said, well, what does that mean? They said there's a cellular reconfiguring that's occurring. It's an activation, restructuring of our DNA that's occurring. And for me, it felt like there were ink blotches in my energy field, in my space that were dissolving. So if like you drop some ink into some water, it's solid when it hits, but then it dissipates, right? And that was like this, I was merging with these other energies in at, at, at a cellular level. So, and at the same time, I got that parts of me, parts of us is dying. Um, some of our ego or our limitations of perception and who we think we are is falling away, disintegrating. And there's so this restructuring is occurring so fast um, that we can't track it or see it. And then I sort of, I guess I got distracted with something else, but, um, so there's a lot going on. And I think what I've noticed witnessed with clients is like yourself, Mario, starting to feel like you're drawn to channeling, um, messages, doing healings, participating as, as a beacon of light to help society, help mankind, in various ways. Um, and it doesn't have to be, I mean, you could be a carpenter and I mean, Jesus was and helped people. So it doesn't have to be as a light worker. That's, you know, I think uh, a mortgage broker could be a light worker. Right. Yeah. So wow. I see we've got, um, Alice, are you with us? I certainly am. <laughs> I'm, I'm really loving this because, um, I have uh, such great respect for you, Mario, because after the rabbit holes I went down this year to hear a parent that um, is present and grounded enough to, you know, protect their children, I think a lot of people are going to be feeling the same way that I am, that that's really important and, and good to hear. Um, so I'm just delighted that I got to hear some of your story. Well, I'm so glad and, and likewise it's good to hear you and talk about Egypt and I mean this is fab. This is great. And you know the magic that we experienced in Egypt and I say magic miracles. I mean I remember looking at granite statues and them smiling at me and smirking and I'm like <laughs> am I losing my mind? And then when other people notice the same thing I'm like what is that? That is so bizarre, right, Alice? Did you, do you remember that? Oh, I mean, it, you know, somebody said, I don't know if it was you, that it's zero point on the grid. And I'm telling you, it was so crazy how psychic everybody was there, all the Egyptians even. I would walk into a store where they would have all the little statues and they'd go, no, 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 don't tell me, Sekhmet, Sekhmet. And it would be like the whole trip, you know, that statues of Sekhmet would be like speaking to me. I know this sounds a little out there, doesn't well, it? Well, and, and, and yeah. you know, the first few times, I mean, I had no connection with Egyptology, nor, you know, as, as a, you know, Catholic child, girl, I, um, you know, followed that, but then even my, my curiosity and other spiritual fat spirituality and other facets of it it egyptology didn't really resonate with me but oh boy oh boy being in that energy what it did was it shifts your perception of what yeah. is real yeah and do i follow goddess segment no it doesn't mean like you have to go off in that direction necessarily for me it was more about learning her basic message of strength and uh, at the time healing. I was healing and i was going to learn how to metamorphose i don't know if, is that the right delineation of the word but she would yeah. take things that were toxic into the fire of her belly and transmute it alchemically and, it's yeah it's an alchemical, alchemical transformation so yeah, that's very powerful. Um, yeah, so it was amazing trip. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, you really start raising an eyebrow going, I did see that. Okay, I'm not, no, I didn't. And then you go to the next place and you see it again or you see it in a different way. And uh, yeah, and when you come home, you start seeing people and the situations and your work or your family and friends very differently again, too. Um, it felt like I was leaving a portal when I came back to the States. It felt literally like I was coming from a different planet and that was closing behind me. It was hard. It, yes, it was it hard was. in a sense because, you know, you have your psychic, I had my vision and I had all of this knowing instantaneously. And it really just grew from there because I, I got into sound, which opened me up like incredibly. So, so would yeah, you so say that was the beginning of your awakening? um or, or your awakening began when with our training i would say i've always been spiritual since i was 17 but there's levels that are life-changing and um i knew enough to be drawn to somebody like you that would be a teacher that would be good and in alignment with very high energy but that's been something in my soul that's always been critically important. I see through usually people's bullshit, but I've also been very naive and a trusting soul. And we well, have so much more to talk about that we started hitting on in private conversations with Pleiades and things I never thought I would be talking about, being a starseed that have become really, really important to me, really important. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to talking about that maybe on our next show. Yeah, we could do that, yeah. Well, there, you know, it, we've, we've got a universe of topics, you know, it's just never ending and it, we, it can shift really fast, the energy. So um, uh, is Mario still with us? I am. Okay. Can you guys? Can you? You guys can't see me, can you? I thought you could see me. No. Do you have uh, your video on? No. Let's see. There you go. Can you see me? It's no. a black room. <laughs> okay. Hi, <I'm> Mario. <laughs> You're one of the Mario brothers. <laughs> I have to turn around towards the lights. <laughs> I know. Well, here's. Let me beam some over to you. <laughs> Yeah, wonderful. It's nice to see your face. Yes, good. Yeah. I love the color of your room, <laughs> that aqua. Oh, I love oh, it. Oh, yeah, it's a good color, isn't it? You, I'm glad you can see that. Yeah, Speaking yeah, that's the color, color of my paintings. And yeah. these old look aqua. Yes, those are Amira's paintings. Yeah, so this one, that color. one's more aqua, but um, that one looks gray in this light, but whatever yeah aqua aqua that's a topic that word that color has been really pronounced lately i don't know about you guys but it's it's fab it's just a great it's it's cold and it's warm and it's beautiful it soothes the on soul on a shallow level right it, it soothes the soul divine. it's been my accent color for like i don't know 10 12 years i yeah. love aqua yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah, it, it does something. It's a, it's like, it's not really the sky color. It's not, and I, I, God knows there's not much water anymore that's that color, <laughs> but. I don't know. Remember her Gata, the Red Sea? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Mario. When you go to Cancun, there's like 18 shades of aqua. No, not at all. It's crazy, the color, because it looks alive. In Cancun, Mexico, I remember yeah, thinking, I've been oh there. my gosh. I don't I remember that, but I guess maybe I was doing other things on the beach. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, no, Cozumel, Cancun. I noticed like the Seychelles, uh, Thailand. Yeah, I guess that's why people gravitate to those things, those areas, right? And it, so. it is a, it's a soul soothing um vibration so let's bring in that aqua into our bubble here that's just surrounding us and just see how that shifts us i've got a little sparkle in there with gold in there 
-hmm. It's sort of a, a, a soothing bathe. Um, what's the word? Um, refreshing. So Mario, I feel like you have a question. I don't know if it's because we're on video or you online, but you're an actor. Come on, you you well, you can stand in the limelight for a minute. Well, I um, honestly did not have a question. I was listening. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> well, okay, isn't that's that funny? Fine. I just see so many <laughs> that probably will get off, and then you're going to go, "Darn, I should have asked her that." Yeah. Um, okay. How about the Lionsgate, Amira? Do you want to close with any type of message with this wonderful energy we're in now for the Lionsgate? Okay, well, let me just tune in and see where spirit wants us to open our hearts, that's for sure. Hmm. So I'm just seeing, this has been coming through all day. Um, I'm, I'm Just imagine, go ahead and close your eyes and imagine a golden beam coming down straight into the top of your head, into your, down into your heart. And then it loops around like a figure eight coming down the body at the bottom of the aura, comes back up behind you, looping up around the front of you to the top and coming back down the back, back through your heart into the front again. So it continues looping through. You've got a golden figure eight, a golden infinity sign pouring into the heart, flowing through your energy field. And we're in this bubble of turquoise or aqua with a little bit of gold just inviting this heart space, this awakening opportunities for us to move forward and take action and following our heart's path, our soul purpose, elevating and activating our next step, inviting our guides and spiritual guidance to step forward, clearly showing us. Just allowing this energy to flow down into Mother Earth, anchoring you in the present moment, into the sea of wisdom, higher vibration of manifestation, triggering and activating cellular memories that have been dormant. And just notice this starlight that's shining bright down into your space and expanding, igniting that Syrian starlight energy, triggering that soul memory of who you are. Again, aligning you with your purpose at a higher frequency. And it's funny, I'm hearing the saying, go boldly where no man has walked before. Man, woman, man. I'll tell you something funny about that in a minute. Okay, go ahead, yeah. Well, it's funny because yeah. when we were doing this, I was thinking of, of my, my mentor, one of my mentors. And uh, she is, uh, her name is Dr. Clarissa Pincola Estes. And uh, she she wrote a book called Women Who Run With the Wolves. Women Who Run With the Wolves. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I love that book. <laughs> so, I'll tell you a funny story. I was at a party. It was, it was fine, you know. And the book literally falls. And I look at the book, and on a very shallow level, I thought, wow, this is so, so beautiful. Black lacquer and gold. And I would never think to put those two together because they seem so bougie or something. 
But this black and gold book was so gorgeous to look at. And so I just happened to open it up and I, I started to read and I just kept repeating in my brain, oh my God, she knows. Oh my God, she knows. Oh my God, she knows. Oh, Mario. Fine. Find out she was doing a class and this, that, and the other. And oh, did I freeze? Yeah, now you're back. Okay. And any long story short, I uh, I got into the class and it was in Colorado and and so I I was told, you know, they're they're going to be about 110 women there. And when I showed up, there were two men, me and the sound guy. <laughs> Speaking of I, a, to oh a sound God. healer here, yeah. Like I'm gonna die, you know, just because I thought this is such kind of a sacred space and I wouldn't want women to feel uh, 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 unsafe by having a man there for whatever reason. And my experience was just the opposite because I tried to keep to myself and it was a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. And I studied with her for years and we haven't been able to do it because of Corona. But when you said, I was thinking of, of that situation when you said, go where no man has walked before. Let me tell you, when I, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> well, and the funny thing is you're right. You usually are a minority. It has been that way. And I think it, we need strong men and they're not effeminate men. There is a difference because a lot of male teachers have been not all of them, but some more effeminate, you know, and so, especially in the spiritual side, or they're completely the opposite, right, Alice? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because um, it just is. It's just, yeah. it's just yeah. interesting. Well, the females have dominated time. this space. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you yeah. know, strong female energy is, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a it's a phenomenal it's a phenomenal energy because it's yeah. So, did you have any experience yeah. of bringing in that um, infinity sign, the gold energy? Well, how was that for you? You know what? It, it was uh, it was it was very kind of soothing and and not grounding in that it it told me to be more grounded, but it was, it just, there was something kind of uh, grounding in a sensual way, not sexual, but just a fluid kind of placement. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I think spirituality is sensual. It, yes. You know, it's highly the sacredness, yes. maybe, and maybe that, sensuality slash sexuality slash spirituality is all kind of one big well I, I, th I think we're probably you know accepting that idea more than you know i mean think back at the nuns when we were growing up the french nuns even you saw their hands and this much of their face <laughs> and i swear i swear half of them levitated because the, the ones that were good were <laughs> phenomenal. Flying nuns. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is because I grew up at a gas station, I remember when the nuns came in one day to get gas, and the younger ones were always fabulous because they played stickball and they, you know, where, where they'd run and they were just great people, you know, and hearty and and I remember looking in the back window while I was pumping gas and I saw like. Uh, meats with plastic wrap and deodorants and soap in bags. And I thought, that's so weird because I, I didn't put those things together. You mean that nuns ate? <laughs> you froze again, Mario. I don't know. Uh, I guess it's the internet, right? Yeah. Alice, um, did, were you raised Catholic? No. Oh, okay. No, really. Um, not. 
I actually started going to uh, catechism and enjoying it, and I got pulled out, interestingly enough, by my stepmother. So, huh. um, yeah. I'm saved. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, some people. I don't know. I loved it. I, I personally loved it. My brother did not have the same experience as me. Yeah, I That's loved it until the, actually, I started not liking it in fifth grade when the teacher in her miniskirt and her really slick mm -hmm. nylon, she had really sexy legs. She would sit on my desk and her high heels were perched on my seat and I was like a little tiny thing and I had to go to the side and she'd send me to the bathroom to clean her glasses because I think I was wearing glasses at the time. My glasses were really dirty and so I'd spend half an hour in there cleaning her glasses. I was afraid that they'd come. So I got to miss the whole class. <laughs> Talk about sensuality and oh spirituality. God. And I remember sexy nylons. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's probably the dark side of the sensuality of religion. <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> and the, boys, the boys in fifth grade, can you imagine them looking at her leg? I mean, if I was noticing her legs, they were practically in yeah, my face anyway. But, you know. <laughs> we, had, we had nothing like that. Yeah. You didn't have that? No. So we had, I was raised, I went to Catholic school, but we only had, I think, two nuns in the whole system at the time mm -hmm. teaching. Um, but, and they were starting to w wear normal clothes or they would just wear a habit, but yes. a sort of a gray smock kind of thing. They were trying to blend in, if you know what I mean. But um, I had two aunts that were nuns. And so my grandmother used to have everybody, you know, wow. do the linens for the church and, you know, so I was pretty, pretty, pretty close to it, but I, I didn't reject or hate Catholicism. It's just that I wanted more. And I felt like I didn't have to, the one thing that got my attention was, and they kept changing the rules, kind of like the COVID year, you know, they keep changing the rules today, masks, no, tomorrow, no masks. Today we wear hats, tomorrow we yeah. don't need a hat. You know, meat on Friday, no meat on Friday, meat on Friday. They kept changing those rules to me, that wasn't God's way. That just screamed at me. And then when um, they, it bugged me that I had to go to confession and tell the priest, and I could not get it through my head that I couldn't talk to God directly. That bothered me. and. That is a guru game, actually. That is a way of controlling people and the masses yeah. and, and having to feel belittled by another being human. So I don't know, I rebelled against that from a very early age and pretended I went to confession. And that was my lie, really. That was my big lie. I was wondering if I'd ever, you know, live to tell about it, but yeah. So I just kept being curious, you know, I'd go to a lot of different churches. And at first I was afraid I, if I entered a Protestant church, I might not come home alive. Yeah, I was really deathly afraid that if I entered another religious institution, I'd die. Yeah. I don't know where that starts, but. Well, because there's only one God, the well, Father Almighty. I, I guess I was too young to understand that other people could be even worshiping the same God. You know, that wasn't part of my awareness. I think a lot of people were so controlled by our religious beginnings or the lack of that we have no, no realization how strong that really is and its impact. I mean, there's many things that I loved about it. I love the ritual. I love the well you know the interesting thing is there you go. Now you're blinking, so now I can see your videos live. Yeah, yeah, you were frozen for a minute. Oh, was I? Um, oh, that was a mirror that time. I yeah. thought it was Mario. Interesting. Yeah, no, I saw Mira frozen. Oh. Okay, well I'm thawing out the <laughs> set. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, how are we doing on time, Alice? I, we, we set it to about 5.30. Um, we don't have anybody else line, lined up that wants to have a burning question answered. Yeah, so I say we call it a night and um, 
we have so many cool topics coming up and um, I'm sure more, more people will be joining in. And it's yeah, I'm not sure good. if it's a good time at five o'clock, but uh, we might need to do it a little bit later. That might affect I, your... Yeah. Most people are probably leaving work or gonna leave work soon at five. I mean, but it's good that's for me. in the West and... Coast, see? Alice is in, uh, where are you, Connecticut? I'm on the East Coast, so it's eight oh. um, when we started oh. here. Yeah. So that, you know, gotcha. we're trying to make a happy medium. And my clients in, in yeah. Europe or in, in Dubai, you know, they're in the middle of the morning. So a lot of people will listen to the replay, but I would like to set it at a time where more people can call in. So, but they can call in on their phone. They don't have to be on video. Yeah. Right, right. With Zoom. So let's play it through and see see what happens. We can be adjusting if we need to. Yeah, and we are open to suggestions on your Facebook page I posted and uh, um, people can sign up on your website to be notified when yeah. your next show is and we can test out maybe a Friday night a little bit later. Yeah, but this new job I got, I got to get up early in the morning, Amir. Okay, so yeah, well, that's a factor. So fast. <laughs> see, see what you did? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys. I really want to thank you for, for coming, for sharing your beautiful light and your energy and your stories, your amazing spirit that I sure hope this, well, I know this energy will shift you, Mario, in a way to catapult you into your next big yeah Venture. Well. very yes. exciting yes don't hold back i'm not spirit wants you to <laughs> rip that's good to hear <laughs> good advice. thank you yeah okay we'll talk to you real soon okay. thank you everybody thank, thank you, you to all the guides that showed up to help me and all of us today many blessings yeah. to you see thank you real soon God bless.